There's bloodthirsty wildlife, deadly diseases, murderous pirates, ancient marauders and killer mechs in RimWorld, but there's also base building, crafting and partying too, although it's mostly scary stuff trying to eat you. Can we survive 100 days in RimWorld multiplayer without getting dismembered, burned or kidnapped? Well, we wanted more than just survive, we wanted to challenge a giant fiery machine boss as well and live to tell the tale. My good friend Nubert and I landed on a remote ring world with our little doggy Steve. Oh, while I was walking the dog, you drew a penis. <laughs> We were both pretty bad at survival stuff, but he was worse due to being a teenager with a crippling alcohol addiction. I began by building us a tiny room next to a rocky outcropping, while he started planting corn and rice. I built two beds and a small table, and we brought our meager belongings inside. So, end of day one, we have our first room here Coco built for us. He, get, he built us two Poor beds. His is awful though. He gave me the poor bed. He's really nice. He gave me the nicest <laughs> of the two. They're both shit. On day two, I built us a research table and then used our one and only gun to go hunt a turkey so we wouldn't need to rely only on survival meals. While I was busy running around, Newbird used his big brains and planned what we wanted the base to look like. So my plan right now, my mm -hmm, idea, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. we can turn this into one big space. This will be its own room, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Research is up here. We can build a door here and make a room about this big right here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We'll come off. Be this will be our dining room, right? Okay. Then this here will be fridge. Okay. Then we yeah. can build another room right here, and this can be where we're going to be cooking. We then decided to start researching solar panels so we could get some electricity into our base. But for now, we continued to live like cavemen as Newbert butchered the turkey I caught. He used his bare hands and didn't even wash them before cooking us some simple meals over a campfire outside. On day 4, I built a stonecutter's table so we wouldn't need to rely on wood forever for our building needs. Then I went to catch a couple more turkeys. Those elusive little beasties wasted my whole day, but in the end we had a nice supply of meat and we ended the day playing horseshoes outside. The next day, our first visitors arrived. They must have heard us crash and came looking to strip our cold bodies, but on seeing us alive, they stayed friendly and we decided to trade. Alas, there was a slight misunderstanding and Newbert almost sold our precious gold. They don't have any gold, you're trying to sell our gold. Yeah, I just realized. <laughs> <laughs> But on day 6, we received a little bit less friendly visitors. Two crazed monkeys arrived with wild intentions, but we were not to be intimidated, especially because Nuber decided to be a bait. I have one last beer before I have to get chased by monkeys. While he ran around like crazy, I put our charge rifle to good use and put one of the monkeys out of its misery. Alas, that must have been my one and only lucky shot, as my poor drunken friend had to run endless circles and even got scratched and bitten before I finally hit the last primate. On day 7, Newbert woke up and chose violence. There was a little squirrel sleeping in our base and he decided to beat it up into a pulp. The madman shattered its jaw and let's just say we ate well that day, especially because I went to hunt deer that we spotted nearby, which to be honest took quite a while, but it was worth it. After a good meal, we then spent researching together in the evening. Our unsanitary diet caught up with us on day 8 and Newbert got food poisoning. Luckily, I was the adult here, so I took care of the little alcohol addicted baby and decided to build us a proper butcher stable. On day 9, a naked wild woman wandered into the area. She was a pigskin and while I tried to prevent Newbert from seeing the horrors that ladies hide underneath their clothes, I got interrupted by another group of visitors who wanted to trade with us. We still had some extra silver and we traded that for a reinforced barrel because we wanted to build a mortar in the future to protect our new home. While he was sick in bed, I didn't allow Newbert to drink any alcohol. And while he has recovered from his illness by day 10, he then decided to hide in his room because of withdrawal. Are you okay? On biz, what a weenie. <laughs> <laughs> it was not very effective as it was my room as well, but I let him soak and finished our solar panel research. 
The rice we planted on day one was now ready to be harvested and my friend brought in a good supply of food. I on the other hand was less productive and I botched the construction of a wind turbine and to prove even more useless I caught flu and had to stay in bed. Newbert had to be the adult now and he had his own opinion on the quality medical service he could provide. It's a flu. You won't die from this. After that, a pirate with a knife showed up at our doorstep and I relinquished my rifle to my friend, who decided that spray and pray was the most effective defense in this situation. Uh, I worked on Star Wars, so I can't aim well. But after a while, he managed to shoot the poor old frail and wimpy guy in the leg, killing him instantly. Newbert's medical service continued to be top-notch on day 13, as he blessed me with 0% quality treatment of my flu symptoms which kept me in bed on day 14 as well, when we actually had a wild boar self tame and I lovingly named him Steve. On day 15, Newbert blessed me with another bad treatment and for some reason started building steel walls and doors to seal me in. Admit it, Newbert, you already gave up on me and now you close me into this horrible room? <laughs> to die alone in here, in darkness, I see nothing but dark. I don't know if he thought I'm about to turn into a zombie, but to be honest, he was acting like a zombie himself. Ted, get Newbert, back here. where are you going? Where are you going, Newbert? Where are you going? His issues continued on day 16. His fire went out. He went and got wood for the fire that went... <laughs> <laughs> but I was finally up and running again, so I asked him to return my rifle which he did drop on the ground, then instantly broke and punched it into pieces. <laughs> you put down the rifle so I can use it? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, we now had no guns and no food, so I decided to go punch a squirrel nearby, but I must have still been hazy from the flu as I've mistaken our little doggy Steve for it and I accidentally punched him repeatedly until he became food. He cut off his leg and his paw and he ripped his lung out. I thought he was he's a such squirrel. A small dog. The fact that his bonded animal died just added to Newbert's many many negative thoughts he's been having lately and because he was our designated cook he decided to have a mental breakdown while we had zero meals prepared almost like he didn't want to cook his Steve. That led to some desperation on day 18 when I caught myself eating some raw meat. So I caved and went to cook some meals for us while Newbert wandered around in days. But by the time it was evening, he was once again back to his old alcoholic self and brought in a new batch of rice to go with freshly charred dog meat for dinner. On day 19, a dude fell from the sky and we stripped him for clothes. Are we the baddies? I then started building walls for the outside perimeter where we could eventually place traps. But we could have already used those traps as two mad raccoons charged us and since we didn't have a gun anymore, that attack resulted in painful scratches and bites for the both of us. I continued chopping trees and mass on day 20 and building the walls. And on day 21, our first traps were built. In the meantime, Newbert completed the battery's research so we could store our electrical power. And I finally finished the outer walls. At last, we had some protection. But you know who didn't have any protection? Your mom. And thanks to your mom, you're now here and you're totally gonna click that subscribe button below, right? Right. On day 23, a new group of traders arrived and Newbert decided he wanted to have a mental break even more often and he traded our last remaining beer for their medicine and meals. Exposure to that naked wild pig lady finally broke Newbert on day 24. <gasps> Wait, what if we had slaved the pig people? Oh my god. But I decided to be the adult here and wanted to put her out of her misery. Alas, I forgot we only had a crappy bow and a knife now, which led to an extended fight that left us both battered and bruised, but the naked lady was no more. Alas, being abandoned in a remote wilderness does crazy things to you and I tried to consume the naked lady, so Newbert quickly went to prepare us some meals on day 25. But of course, he broke down in the middle of cooking because he sold all of our beer. I then tried to feed him the pig lady and a raw rabbit. <laughs> Why are you doing the rabbit? <laughs> but of course, that wasn't the best solution, so I went to cook us a meal. There was also a heat wave happening, so I built a passive cooler in our bedroom so we didn't cook ourselves overnight. On day 26, a lone pirate raider armed with a club showed up. I shot him with our crappy bow, but he managed to avoid our traps and he chased me down. His mighty bash was enough to down me and he tried to kidnap me, but Newbert stepped up heroically and dropped him with one shot of his bow. My hero. 
Clearly, the one trap we had didn't really help against raiders, so I went to destroy some ancient ruins to get the stone we needed. But that got me to level 6 in construction, and on day 28, I finally built that solar panel. So close, so close, let's go, baby! Yes! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> but not before an alpaca went mad and we locked ourselves inside. <laughs> Can you just imagine you got like this wooden window and it's like sticking its nose through because you have no glass? <laughs> Come out so I can bite you. <laughs> yeah, alcohol withdrawal does weird stuff to your brain, but we used this locked inside time to begin mining deeper into the mountain to build a nutrient paste dispenser. By the morning of day 29, that alpaca bled out from stepping on our one last remaining trap, and instead of rebuilding it, I went to mine steel that we desperately needed. Which allowed me to build a battery to store the power, and Newbert celebrated that by going on a tantrum in our bedroom due to alcohol withdrawal. I then built the nutrient paste dispenser, and we rejoiced that finally, we didn't have to rely on a drunken child anymore to cook for us. A rat also went mad and died on our traps, then we started mass harvesting the corn and began researching microelectronics. The corn harvest continued on day 32, and it netted us more than 700 units of corn, which we knew should be enough to keep us alive over the upcoming winter. And speaking of winter, it was slowly starting to get colder, so we put on our parkas that we previously stole from dead bodies. While it was colder, it wasn't cold enough, at least not for our fridge, so I built a cooler on day 34. And then a tailoring bench on day 35. So I put my terrible tailoring skills to good use and crafted us two cowboy hats. At this point, our hats were so far gone, we even got excited about little things like potatoes. We got 11 potatoes. Ooh. That's gold, boys. Oh man, yeah. On day 36, a group of traders showed up and we purchased some gold and plasteel from them for future research purposes. On day 37, we started building floors inside of our little cozy home and I built a machining table because we wanted to craft machine pistols to replace our crappy bows. Alas, no one actually had level 4 crafting required, so that had to wait. Next, Newbert started sculpting uh, beautiful statues. Hell yeah, poor sculpture. What else could we hope for? <laughs> it's not awful. That's plus 25 beauty to the room. That's Hell like having yeah. five plant pots. And I began working on simple helmets for us. Not only they provided better head protection than cowboy hats, but they also gave me crafting XP I needed. New trader Caravan arrived as well, and Newbert sold him some of our old ratty apparel and bought himself a pila for hunting. On day 39, snow began to fall, so Newbert harvested the last of our rice and I was busy crafting some more helmets. With day 40, winter officially began and we spent it deciding how to extend our barracks slash crafting area. This will be our barracks workspace, we'll move the research lab up here. Make okay. it big enough for Mechanite or nonsense in there. Which was then interrupted by a mad rat that suicided itself on our traps. I used the last of our leather to make spare combo heads and get even more crafting XP, and Newbert worked on stone cutting so we could build extra traps in case of an emergency. A storm that raged overnight set half of the map on fire on day 42, and Newbert tried to contain the wildfire next to our home, but instead he set himself on fire. Are you in fire? <laughs> Did you walk over fire? Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, weather gods took pity on us and blessed us with rain, so he survived with only small superficial burn marks. By day 43, I finally got to level 4 crafting and that meant I could start working on machine pistols. Which could really come in handy because two raccoons decided to unleash their fury upon us, but luckily we had traps. I did finish one of the pistols then and it was perfect timing, because we got assaulted by two ferocious guinea pigs. Two. I mean, we can, All right, we can punch them. But, yeah, let's kill them. Then we put my new gun and Nuber's Pila to good use. On day 45, I finished the second machine pistol and finally armed with more than just sticks and stones, we were not afraid to leave the safety of our base to go mine steel together. And that steel allowed me to build a second solar panel to increase our power supply. On day 46, we continued proving that we were indeed the baddies, as we rejected a dude who fell from the sky with a severe paralytic abasia disease. This guy got paralytic abasia? Amazing. No, I rejected him. <laughs> 
It's a paralytic abasia. We already have to deal with Newbert the whole game so far. <laughs> Newbert's stone cutting work also supplied us with enough marble so that I could start expanding our outer walls and finally use something less flammable than wood. Newbert then continued to work on sculptures to spruce up our home and I extended our trap corridor which brought me to level 10 in construction. Truly a big moment for us. On day 49, a combat supplier caravan arrived and we rejoiced, for we knew that we could sell all the crappy hats and helmets and other crafts I created in my pursuit of better crafting skill. The traders also had an excellent quality machine pistol and I bought that one for myself. On day 51, we continued mining to expand our home and then Newbert went to punch the ancient dormant mech to unlock the Mechanator quest. That giant machine out there, I need you to go punch it. Really? Yes. <laughs> for how long? I don't know. He banged on it the whole night until it finally blew up in the morning causing a large fire. But that allowed him to accept the quest which spawned a scorcher who died on our traps. Which was good because we were both busy fighting a fire in our base caused by a short circuit event. Then Nubert extracted the mechling from an ancient mechanator and plugged it into his own head and we got ourselves a constructoid bot and lovingly named him Steve. He instantly began repairing our base which provoked some deep thoughts from Nubert. Nubert? Are you, are yeah. you alive still? I'm still here, I'm in deep thought. <laughs> and I continued mining out our home. Then, Steve went to build us more traps on day 54, while I continued mining and Nubert finished the research on basic mech tech, unlocking the ability to get new little bot servants. The spring has arrived once again on day 55, and Nubert set up a shelf maze in our new bigger base. I then helped Steve smoothing the cave walls to make the place look prettier. We had enough of marble supply now, so I decided to start replacing the old wooden fridge walls and build them from sturdier and prettier material. On day 57, and we started digging a big new room for a future Mac lab and if it wasn't clear previously that we are indeed the baddies then it became crystal clear when another dude fell from the sky yeah he's garbage bye bye dan <laughs> take care dan see you next fall <laughs> <laughs> At this point, we were slightly worried that sappers might attack us I wanna sap, I wanna sap, I wanna sap exactly. now he just shows up with a shovel <laughs> and a pickaxe. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna get you soon! <laughs> but for now, we couldn't really do much about them, so I started replacing the outer walls with marble as well. In the evening, we partied hard at a lantern festival, which was unfortunately unimpressive. On day 59, I finished digging out the mag lab, then I joined Newbert at a steel deposit, because we needed it so Newbert could build a mag gestator. On day 61, we agreed to start planting smoke leaf for future fun and profit. Some drugs? Also recreation, you know? Yeah, drugs, <laughs> let's go. And I began digging for a new research room we were planning. Day 62 began ominously, as a raider tried to extort us with a shitty revolver. He did manage to survive three traps, but the fourth was too much for the poor bloke. Newbert then crafted the first basic subcore and used it to begin gestating a new mech, and I went to build a wind turbine because our power needs began increasing daily. Then we moved the research bench into a new lab room, where Steve began placing down sterile floors to help with the research research speed and I kept digging for more steel so Newbert could gestate more Steves. Since summer was closing in, Newbert decided to build air conditioning. I was busy hunting alpacas because we wanted to replace our ratty parkas with fresh new dusters for the summer. On day 66, I discovered an ancient danger while hunting so I ran in fear back home and I started crafting our first duster, made from alpaca fur. Unfortunately, my crafting skill was still pretty bad so the duster was shit. Newbert then built another mag gestator and we got ourselves a new Agrihand Mac to help with growing our crops after we had to reject another child. I'm sorry. No, no, it's all good. <laughs> okay, I'll let you reject the next one. <laughs> <laughs> we had some rotten corpses lying around which didn't smell too great in the summer heat so I told Steve to go dig a couple of graves and I went to hunt some more animals so I could maybe craft a better duster which I did finish crafting on day 70 but it was unfortunately far from being better than the previous one so as punishment I went to bury the rotting corpses and finished just before we got a lifter mech who could have done the job instead of me on day 71 we had Steve build marble floors in our mech lab to make the place a bit prettier and Newbert finally finished researching microelectronics. We also got a clean sweeper mech which we desperately needed as cleanliness was not one of our virtues. I thought about accepting a combat related quest but my friend had some slight real life issues. I spilled tea all over my keyboard so you figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> my mouse pad's wet. I'm gonna turn it around. 
<laughs> no, come on. This <laughs> is drifting when I went to <laughs> Oh, Jesus. <laughs> if I lift up my keyboard, it just starts pouring out tea. This is great. So instead, I told Steve to build us a high-tech research bench we so desperately wanted. After Newbert shared some of his fears on day 73... Dude, it poured right on my crotch. You can't imagine the <laughs> horror I was feeling, bro. Dude, I was terrified. <laughs> We started building thicker walls next to the Mac lab, in protection from sappers and I went to dig out a small hospital area. We also added a couple of sandbags outside our main door for protection against anyone tough enough to get past our traps and I improved half of the new hospital with sterile floors, but unfortunately we didn't have enough silver for the whole place. Multi-analyzer was the next research we decided to focus on and Newbert began gestating our first military. I added two beds to our new hospital and then two Neanderthals showed up, but they never made it past the traps. So I had to bury them on day 76. And then I increased the size of our fridge so we could fit in some more raw food we've been getting via the new agri hand. On day 78 we got our first military, which improved our combat capacity by 50%. Steve was busy building marble floors in the fridge, which was quite appropriate because Newbert and I both got food poisoning from the dirty kitchen area. Newbert then had some opinions on how his character did the cooking. What do you do? Wipe his bought with his bare hands and then stick it in the <laughs> pasta what's going on dude now you cook you scratching your butt with the with the tongs before grabbing the food and in the afternoon a couple of rare thrombos wandered in from the wilderness as we were increasingly preparing for the final big mag fight against diablos and we can use all of our other mechs as a distraction the cost is gonna be high I began planning a new trap corridor on day 80, and Newbert started researching gas operation to unlock new guns. On day 81, we had another Sky Lantern party, but this time around, it was beautiful. A trade caravan arrived after seeing us play with fire like kids, and we traded some of our old hats, which gave us enough silver to complete the sterile tiles in the hospital. Newbert thought it would be a good idea to piss off the thrombos right next to the traders, and they opened fire right away. But the bees didn't care for them and just wandered off the edge of the map. Nuber then finished the gun research on day 82 and I scoured the map in search of components I could mine so I could craft an EMP grenade which I knew we'd need to fight the Big Mac boss. Our hospital was now finished and we started building the planned trap corridor, which was mostly built by day 84 and that was a good thing because we knew we'd need those traps as Newbert was planning to open the ancient danger before we summoned the mag boss. But the trap corridor worked too well, as even I managed to step on one of the traps, getting myself chopped up nicely in the process. But my dear friend healed me in our new hospital, using best in the line glitter world meds and together we reminisced about the old times. <laughs> Remember when you were treating me for uh, that flu and yeah, was... it was darkness? <laughs> Complete darkness. <laughs> Then, we accepted a heatwave quest that gave us a couple of advanced components and since it was already autumn, didn't cause any issues. On day 86, there was a fire near our base and a bunch of traders that were visiting us decided to walk right into it. We ran to hell, but luckily it was rain that saved us once again. Then, Newbert admitted he pissed himself while we were recording. There, there's a pool of fluid in my chair and it just soaked the fabric and I was like, hmm. Hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> On day 87, I crafted EMP grenades in preparation of a big mech fight and we decided we wanted to use the chain shotguns in the coming fight. Alas, my crafting skill was too low to craft those. So I went back to training. I crafted an airwire headset for Newbert so he could control more mechs, then I went to train my skills by making crappy cowboy hats, while my friend spent his day researching. On day 89, a bunch of rats went mad, but our traps were great again and made mincemeat of all 7 of them. I then began making a heavy SMG because I still didn't have the skill for chain shotguns, and Newbert shared a heartwarming story of how life is like in Murka. This day there was like a mouse in there and the mouse was adorable so I was just holding it on my hand, it was cold, wet and scared. I was just working holding this mouse and my boss came over and kicked it on the ground and shot it. <laughs> what the? By day 90, I finished the heavy SMG, which I used myself and that got me to level 6 in crafting, which allowed me to begin working on chain shoddy for Newbert. We also had a mega sloth that self-tamed, a beautiful giant furry Steve. 
And speaking of Steve's, since Newbert had his airwire headset now, he could start just dating more militars and I finished his chain shotgun. Then we went to mine more steel because we needed it for a growing mech army. On day 92, we finally decided to open the Ancient Danger. There was only one Scorcher in there, but also two Persona Swords, which were unfortunately pretty crappy quality. We left the Fire Mech there to break out on his own accord, and it went and attacked two visitors. <laughs> Oh jeez. Oh yeah, Scorchers are so, so fred, terrible. Fred. It managed to burn down one, but the other took it down. So, easy ancient danger. Or so we thought. Numbert went to plunder the ancient mausoleum and used the medical skill trainer to get his med skill all the way up to 10, but then he got greedy and he opened the burial caskets. Lots of heavily armed and armored dudes popped out and instantly zeroed one of the steves, so Numbert had to run. They chased him all the way back to our base where they got distracted by our traps and the poor furry Steve, who gave his life in our defense. We had a firefight with the last of the survivors and then it was over. All the Steves were dead or downed, but we got lots of good weapons and armor from the Tomb Raiders. I took some of the flag armor from them, then went to rebuild the traps. Newbert barred one of their assault rifles and put on the marine armor, then went around repairing our poor downed Steves. A bunch of waste rats attacked us on day 95 and we decided to test our new militaries who made quick work of them. Then a group of furries used drop pods to jump right in the midst of our home, but with some clever flanking and heavy fire from the many militaries, we had an easy time putting them six feet under. On day 96, I continued rebuilding traps. Then an Empire tribute collector showed up and we generously gifted them over 100 gold, which apparently made us very honorable and they bestowed upon me the title of freeholder. We got a new military and Nubert began gestating another while he had some interesting opinions. If you smell poop, it's because you inhale poop oh yeah <laughs> i'm like oh, oh which led to the conversation on what you actually need to become a successful youtuber you get a little kid getting brain damage <laughs> <a> gas pump. <laughs> and that's why we became youtubers it all stems from that <laughs> well i don't know any any youtubers though that are completely solid in the head. The next two days we spent planning and preparing for the big mag boss and a toxic fallout surprised us on day 100. And because we didn't know how to count, Newbert summoned the big bad inferno mag on day 101. He positioned himself and his seven militaries behind our sandbags while I went for a flank with my EMP grenades. Diabolus had his own three military guards but we were sure our traps would take care of them. And so they did, while the big bat came into our small kill box very damaged. He tried to use his big beam of death, but I stunned him with an EMP grenade, then Newbert and his militaries destroyed him with ease, and our job here was done. You guys, we achieved 100 days, we killed let's the Diabolus. Let's go. Yes. Goals have been achieved. Uh, let's aim for 2000 likes on this video and we'll make a part two.